hey beautiful people welcome and welcome back to my channel it's Dale here and in today's video I'll be sharing with you the first few things you should do immediately you get to Heathrow Airport immediately you get to Manchester Airport or immediately you get to Belfast Airport so I'm gonna be sharing with you the first few things you should get or the first few things you should do immediately you get to the UK if this is the first time you're joining this channel thank you so much for joining my name is Teo and I hope you love my content enough to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if not for anything for the fact that I have a new hair on Ooh. okay so let's get straight into the video Firstly, I would like to say congratulations. It's not, an easy thing. it's not easy to get your visa done. It's not easy to book your flight. It's not easy to get all those processes. It is very hectic. So I want to say congratulations to you. And I really hope that this journey of yours pays off. Like, I hope that you do not regret coming into the UK, either for schooling or for work purposes, I hope that you actualize your dreams and I want you to know that the UK is a land of opportunities. A shout out to Sharon Okorie, she's also a new YouTuber, she always here supporting me. First thing I'll advise you to do immediately you get to the UK or I'll advise you to do it before you come into the UK so that you already have that with you is to get a SIM card. If you're coming as a student, it might be what you sending the sim card to your school address so immediately you get to your school you pick it up you can either order it on ebay or you can order it on amazon before you arrive out just so you get it when you arrive to uk if you are coming as a nurse as i did it is most likely that your employer is going to get that done for you your employer will pick you up at the airport most employers because i know a lot of things has changed now when I came into the UK, we always have our employers coming to pick us up at the airport. And one of the starter packs they give to us is a SIM card. So you will most likely get a SIM card given to you by your employer. What I want you not to do is get your SIM card at the airport. Listen to me. Do not get your SIM card at the airport. It is super expensive. Like it is times 20 of how much you get it outside. Don't let them to start scamming you immediately you enter the UK. Don't let them to start from the arrival port. They have started. You have started spending money like a criminal. You started spending money, and no, do not do that. I mean, if you travel a lot, you should know that things in the airport cost like ten times. So this is basic travel skills. By the way, I'm already teaching you people about travel hacks. Do not get it at the airport. It's like times twenty of the price. So yeah, get a SIM card. You can get EE. You can get O2. You can get anyone that is cheap with a plan. Use it while you're out of your accommodation, because you you might have Wi-Fi at your place or at the hotel where you will be staying at the first few days. So basically, you need a SIM with active subscription, so you will be able to chat with people when you're outside of. Or place of residence and now this brings me to the second point which is getting your accommodation sorted it's easier to get it sorted when you're here because I don't want you to do what I ordered versus what I got I don't know if you understand what I mean but if you are coming into the UK it's better for you to do your viewings yourself because I tell you what housing in the UK is quite I don't know how I'm gonna put it for you to understand but sometimes it's not what you see so you might go to a property and it, it's not it doesn't have proper heating or it doesn't have a you don't like the location like it's too crowded for me i do not like crowded place i like somewhere that is more reserved so if you get a place before coming it's going to be hard for you you might like it you might not like it so it's good if you already have someone here in the uk who lives close to where you'll be working or schooling as the case may be you might put up with them for a few days and get your accommodation sorted but if you're coming coming with the health and care visa it's most likely that your employer is going to get you a hotel like for me my employer got me a two weeks hotel before i was able to get my own place so yeah apps that you can search online to get your accommodation because here most things are online guys um 
you get most information online you get most things online so one of the apps you could use you can use zoopla you can also use right mode or you could search for flat share so um, things you might find common is when you come into the uk you most likely be sharing apartment or um for a few few months because um, it's more expensive to get your own place but you're just going to save costs and owing to the fact that you've not received your first salary or you might not come enough funds for renting your own place you might find renting a shared accommodation easier than getting your own place because you need a down payment just know that you're going to spend so much money but when you share a flat the bills are shared with some landlords will take two to three months down payment some will take one but most of them take down payment so you need to put that into consideration so getting your apartment sorted is also another thing and when you get your apartment and when you get your sim do not forget to send it to your family and also send your address to someone you trust just so they have an inside of where you live to in just in case of any emergency they know where you live they know your address and they know your postcode they will be able to help you whenever you have emergency and by the way guys you will need to know the emergency numbers in the uk just in case you've got fire outbreak or you're having a serious illness you can dial 111 nhs to speak with them or you can also call um, 999 you need to have that at the back of your mind also whenever you have an emergency you know the numbers to call because in the uk these things work if you need an ambulance you call for it if you need a fire service call for it these are basic tips that you need just in case there's an emergency now let's move over to the third point the next thing you want to do is to open a bank account guys opening a bank account in the uk is another form of stress if you want to register for a bank you need to know that you need to book an appointment to open an account and sometimes you might not have available dates in that month you need to, especially if you live in big cities you might not have appointment that month um, you need to book in advance so what i advise you to do is to get a mobile bank app and of course i will always refer you to monzo so monzo is one of the easiest app to register online your google play store and just download the app on your phone it's very easy guys i remember i did it within five to ten minutes you just take a picture of your face your id card your location and boom they will send you your ATM card to your address, the address you registered. So I did mine while I was in the hotel and I got my Monzo bank details and everything by post at the hotel. So even before I got my own apartment, I got a bank account. I am still using Monzo at this point. What you need to do is get in a, a travel card. So it's a bus pass for the month. So sometimes you might pay like £60 for a month for traveling around your city. So it's very economical. You do not need to pay every time you enter the bus. So when you get a travel pass, you can just pay for one month travel. So everywhere you go in that city, so it depends on wherever you are. If you get one of them, you can only use that bus pass for for one month. And after a month, you can renew it. So go online and check the the services in your area. So you can have stagecoach, you can have um, other ones, depends on where you live. In regards to transportation, another way you can do it is to download the Uber app. Just in case you're going to locations, you do not want to use the bus or the train, you can use your Uber or you've got your house, you've got your SIM card, you've got your travel pass, you've got next thing you want to do is to go to your post office to get your BROP card. Now the BROP card is just like your resident permit. So this card is what you get. I think you get it within a few weeks of being in the UK. When you get your visa at the um, at your country, you would be given your visa alongside a letter that states your location, um, probably where you're going to school or where you're going to work. So when it states your location, it's going to state your the nearest post office to the address. So that is where you go and collect your BRP card. So your BRP card is what licenses you to live and either work in the UK or it tells you what you can do or what you cannot do it gives you when your visa is going to expire so it might be three years might be one year depending on your reason of being in the uk so that card is something you need to get and keep for future purposes in when you get to the uk is to download an app that allows you to scan your documents so i want you to understand that in the uk it's very difficult to get photocopying um cyber cafe i don't know but I find it like very difficult 
and one of the things that has helped me is I got myself a um, photocopying machine at home which I use and I got on my phone an app called the Genus app I'm gonna put it on the screen so that app just helps me to scan my documents and it helps me to convert it to PDF file now if you live in the UK most things are done online and you find out that you need to send a lot of documents and you need to send them via email and all that so you definitely need an app that helps you scan document I can't I can't imagine you going to cyber cafe just to scan or for the copy a document it does really take time so what you want to get is an app that helps you to scan documents and save it on your phone and also convert it to PDF file most people already have this before coming to the UK but I never did I had it when I got to the UK I've given you a lot of tips already so I think at this point if you've not subscribed to my channel this is the best time for you to subscribe to my channel on this channel I talk about life in the UK travel and everything lifestyle in between so I bet you this channel is something you want to stick to so I believe it's the right time for you to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up yes or yes yes <laughs> thank you for subscribing now let's go back to the next thing you need to do once you get to the UK part is registering with your GP surgery now the UK operates a universal healthcare system we call it the NHS so the NHS is like a government organization where people are being treated in the uk and it's for free and yeah although some people will say oh yeah we do pay tax yeah we do pay tax there are some countries that you pay tax and you still pay for healthcare. so guys the nhs is free 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 i have never seen where they had to send a patient to go pay for something before a treatment is done or before they discharge a patient you go to pay your bills no so yes guys the nhs is free so you need to go register with a gp surgery and this has to be a location close to you if you go to a location that is not close to you there's a possibility they might not register you so you need to settle in your place of um either your place of duty where you'll be working primarily or where you will be schooling and you've got an accommodation you need to register with the gp close to you just go online and search for um gp surgeries near me so when you see one you need to book an appointment some of them are steps working some of them you need to book online or one thing you need to get is getting the nhs app the nhs app just helps you you can get to see your health history on the app your gp appointment your online prescription so yeah you can order medications online you need to register it tells you your nhs number now the nhs number is lost like an identification number so whenever you get if you get ill in somewhere else not in your city they just need to get your nhs number and they see all your health history if there is an emergency they have your number to see what you are allergic to know what treatment you have taken in the past a comprehensive history of everything you have done regarding health so it tells them that and it just saves you uh, saves you stress of not being attended to promptly um, so you need to register with the GP and do not forget whenever you move houses you still need to register for a new GP surgery the next thing I want to do is register with the votes um, I won't go into details with that because I have already done that in a previous video where I talked about um, building your credit score as early as possible start building your credit score and I'll put the video up there so you will be able to go watch it after this so you can see the reason why i say register to vote in your place of residency another very important thing you need immediately get to the uk is to download an app called hmrc app now guys i know that some countries do not know much about tax but in the uk a taxing system is very important and it's one of the things that helps the uk economy so one of the things you need to do when you get here is to get hmrc app so this app helps you to monitor your tax code um, monitor how much taxes you will be paying every year because if because guys there's something called emergency tax and monitor your tax code just so you'll be able to call hmrc if you want to debate why your tax is high if you don't have that app you might just be looking at your pay slip but i advise you to get the app so you'll be able to monitor your tax code and another very important thing to do is to download the moneybox app now the moneybox app is an app that helps you to either save for your pension or save towards your first home in the uk now if you're already in the nhs you might likely not need the pension side but if you are not you can do that as well the most important thing about this is 
getting the lifetime ISA account. So it's like an individual savings account. So this helps you to save towards your very first home. It's like a kind of government funding that helps you to save towards your first home. And for you to be eligible, one of the things is you've never had a home both in the UK or outside the UK. So you must be a first time buyer. I do not want to go into property yet because I do not feel confident enough going into the property ladder and talking about it yet on my channel. But when the time is right, I'll talk about it. So you might want to subscribe to my channel to follow my journey when I'm happy to share it. So yeah, you need to download the Moneybox app. So this app, you can save up to £4,000 per tax year so now the tax year in the uk runs from april to april so within that period you can save the maximum you can save is four thousand now guys for every four thousand you have saved in your lifetime isa account the government is going to give you like one thousand pound now that is like five thousand pound in your account and the sole purpose of this is helping you get your first home. So take for instance, you save for two years, you are getting 10,000. Now that 1,000 is given to you by the UK government tax free for you to buy your first home. So you cannot use it to buy a car. You cannot use it to travel. You cannot use it for your vacations. You cannot use it to do something else. It must be for your very first home. So yeah, guys, you might want to get that up. It's a win-win situation do not save money in the bank do you still save money in the bank people do not save money in the bank in 2022 anymore be financially smart so while you make the money learn to invest and learn to just do something with the money to bring you back profit i hope that you like this video enough to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you do not miss my future uploads and so this is like a bonus for registered nurses coming into the uk you can also register with unions in the UK, popular unions in the UK, Arusian and Unison. So these bodies help you whenever you get into trouble, give you advice. Just be, Sometimes I just call Arusian and to speak to them about how I feel on my place of work. And they do help out. They are very good with customer service. They are very nice. They give you all the support you need. And yeah, if you're going to start doing agency, you really do need a union like Unison or RCN. In fact, it's one of the basic requirements of being an agency. And also, each relating to work, they are always available to speak to you and to advise you. Also, they, they've got lawyers just in case you need to go to hearings or anything. They've got lawyers to help you and they will sort that out for you. Then after your first year, I think you'll be paying £16 per month? Yeah, I think like £16 per month for the registration fee for RCN because I am with RCN. I'm not sure of what Unison um, charges their nurses. Also, healthcare assistants can register. But if you're already in the UK, if you're settling down in the UK, please let us know which um, things you think people should do as soon as they get to the UK. Please drop it down in the comment section. Let's all learn together. Thank you so much for watching and yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video.